Okay, hello everyone. This video is a continuation of the example we saw at the end of week two. Before we finish off the proof, let me remind you of where we stood. We had this recursive definition of a set S with one base rule and two recursive rules. And we came up with the following characterization. An ordered pair xy is in the set if and only if 3 divides x minus y. Now I said if and only if, and in class we proved if xy is in s, then 3 divides their difference, 3 divides x minus y. What we'll do in this video is finish the proof of the converse. If we have two natural numbers such that 3 divides their difference, x minus y, then the ordered pair xy is in the set. In class, we developed this inductive type idea of working backwards from x, y. So as an aside, if we considered the pair 7, 4, 3 certainly divides their difference. And to show that 7, 4 was in s, we looked at the sequence of recursive rules. So for example, 4, 4 by going backwards from the second rule, and then 3, 3, etc. And this sort of working backwards idea, well, that was induction. So all we needed to do, really, is make this intuition rigorous. Unfortunately, our tools of simple and complete induction only work on natural numbers. They don't work on ordered pairs directly. So to solve this problem, we introduced a size measure on ordered pairs, simply the sum of the two components. And here's our predicate which only talks about x, y with a certain size n. Of course, what we'll prove is, for all natural numbers, p of n. In class, we covered the base case. So I won't cover it again here. For the induction step, well, we do the same old thing. We let k be some natural number, and we use the induction hypothesis for complete induction, which is assuming p of 0, p of 1, all through p of k hold. And of course, these extra assumptions, this is what makes it complete induction. So we want to prove. P of k plus 1. How do we prove this? It's a for all. So let's pick arbitrary ones that satisfy the properties that we're interested in. So at this point, we have two natural numbers, x and y, whose sum is k and whose difference is divisible by 3. And we'll show that x, y is indeed in S. Oh, wait, how do we do this? Well, let's go back to our example 7, 4. Well, let's go back to our example 7, 4. And imagine applying this first recursive rule backwards so that we get 6, 3. First of all, 7 plus 4 is bigger than 6 plus 3. So this is certainly smaller, according to our measure of size from earlier. Also, also, 3 divides 6 minus 3. So we can actually use our induction hypothesis here and get that 6, 3 is in S. Remember that our induction hypothesis says that if the sum is smaller, and in this case, if x minus y is divisible by 3, then x plus, or sorry, then xy is in s. And the whole purpose of this was if we establish that 3, 6 is in s, then applying the first recursive rule gives us that 7, 4 is also in s. Essentially, what we've done is 
taken a step backwards using the recursive rule, and then applied the induction hypothesis. So let's make that argument more formal now, using our x and y from earlier. So here's the first comments. Consider x minus 1, y minus 1. What do we know about this? Well, x minus 1 minus y minus 1, that's equal to x minus y. And so it's divisible by 3. Let's make sure we're all on the same page here. This is because we've assumed this. So 3 divides x minus 1 minus y minus 1. This by itself isn't enough to use the induction hypothesis. Because remember, the induction hypothesis only applies when the size is smaller. So let's check that. The size for this ordered pair is k minus 1. Of course, because x plus y, that's equal to k plus 1. So it has a smaller size. These two facts together imply that we can use the induction hypothesis, which tells us that x minus 1, y minus 1 is in S. And so by applying And so by applying the first recursive rule, xy is also an s. And we've achieved what we wanted to prove.